anterior circumflex humeral artery and posterior circumflex humeral arteries. As you can see, they're going to surround the surgical neck of humerus anteriorly and posteriorly and will anastomose with each other on the lateral side of the surgical neck. Out of these two, remember that posterior circumflex humeral is a larger branch and this posterior circumflex humeral artery, remember it runs along with its nerve, accompanying nerve and that nerve is axillary nerve. Both of these structures are under the cover of deltoid. The posterior and lateral fibers of deltoid cover this posterior circumflex humeral artery and axillary nerve. And this anterior circumflex humeral artery, remember it gives an ascending branch anteriorly between the lesser and greater tubercles through the intertubercular sulcus. We also call it as bicipital groove through which the tendon of long head of biceps along with its synovial sheath emerges out. And it's this ascending branch from the anterior circumflex humeral artery which reaches to supply the shoulder joint. This is the ascending branch. And don't forget that there will be a descending branch, a descending branch from the posterior circumflex. It will go reverse, like anterior will give an ascending branch, right? Will ascend into intertubercular sulcus to supply the shoulder joint. Similarly, in a posterior circumflex humeral artery will give a descending branch. This is called descending branch of posterior circumflex humeral artery. Now, this will descend down and will anastomose with an ascending branch from below. Remember, on the back of humerus, there's a radial groove in that is profunda brachial artery and that profunda brachial artery will give an ascending branch which will anastomose with this descending branch of the posterior circumflex humeral artery on the back of humerus in the upper half. Now, because anatomy cannot be taught completely, we only teach what is important. So one thing, because it's seen here in this image, I'm going to tell you that remember that both the anterior and posterior circumflex humeral arteries, the both of them will give ascending and descending and transverse branches. Remember the medial and lateral circumflex femoral arteries, there also they were giving ascending, descending and transverse branches, medial and lateral circumflex femoral arteries. Similarly here also, both these arteries arteries will give ascending, descending and transverse branches. The transverse branches of the two will reach on the lateral side of the surgical neck of humerus to anastomose with each other and ascending of anterior is more prominent. That's why we mentioned that it is running in the intertubercular sulcus. You can see here that this artery is reaching into the intertubercular sulcus. This artery is from the anterior circumflex humeral artery, ascending branch. Similarly, it will also give a descending branch which will supply blood in the upper portion of the humerus, the periosteal and the adjoining muscles. Similarly, in a posterior circumflex humeral artery has a prominent descending branch. This I taught you is the descending branch from the posterior circumflex humeral artery. This will anastomose with an ascending branch from the profunda brachial artery in the upper portion of the back of arm. It also gives ascending branches. Posterior circumflex also gives minor ascending branches. They will supply the shoulder joint. So both these arteries give ascending, descending and transverse branches but in anterior circumflex it's the ascending which is a prominent branch and in posterior circumflex humeral it's descending that's a prominent branch. 